Chapter 1 You don't deserve me you are listening at NovelFull.audio 7 Days Hotel, Port Hampton Connor MacDonald rode an electric bike to the Seven Days Hotel, colloquially known as the Lover's Haven, to deliver food. Today was the birthday of his girlfriend, Mandy Hines. After delivering the last order in the morning, he would go on a date with her. Filled with anticipation, Connor carried the takeaway and walked toward the Seven Days Hotel. Just then, a young man and a girl walked out of the elevator hand dot in dot hand. The guy was wearing an Armani shirt, a Rolex watch, and a BMW key fob hanging on his waist. The woman was dressed in a miniskirt that exposed her shapely white thighs. She was smitten and looked enticing. The two clung to each other and flirted with each other like they were a couple. Mandy. Connor could not believe his eyes, and he hastily ran to them. Last night, Mandy had told him that she was going to the movies with her bestie and would not be back that night. Connor never expected that he would run into her at the Seven Days Hotel. She was startled, her expression changed. She subconsciously wanted to break free from the guy when she heard Connor's voice, but the guy was holding her tightly. What are you afraid of? Do you still want to be with that broke guy? He was shorter than average. If it were not for his branded wear, he would have been inconspicuous, and no one would have spared a glance at him. Mandy's eyes flickered for a moment. She was not as panicked as before. But instead, she looked callously indifferent. Well, now that you've found out, I guess it's time to let you know, Connor, said the rich guy holding Mandy, your girlfriend is dating me now. He was Connor's classmate, Brandon Guthrie. Unlike Connor, he was a rich kid. Connor staggered back as his face was grave when he heard Brandon's words. Then, ignoring Brandon, he pulled Mandy over. Come home with me, Mandy. I can make you happy. Don't touch me. Mandy pushed Connor's hand away. Why should I go with you? Can you afford to buy the phones and handbags that I like? You even need to wait until my birthday before we can watch a movie. What makes you think you can make me happy? Mandy, I may be broke now, but I will work harder. Connor gritted his teeth. Work harder. You're an orphan with no money, power, or background. You can't achieve the level of wealth that Brandon has just by being a delivery guy, Mandy sneered. Dot, wake up, Connor. Mandy won't go with you. Do you want her to deliver food with you? Brandon taunted him. I have long wanted to tell you that you don't deserve me. We are done, Connor, Mandy said in an icy voice. Then, she turned to look at Brandon with a fond smile and put her hands through his arm. Let's go, Brandon. A broke guy like you don't deserve love, you know. Brandon shot a disdainful look at Connor as he brought Mandy toward a BMW parked outside the hotel. Connor looked on while his heart was aching as Mandy left. He felt angry, painful, indignant, yet helpless. You humiliate me just because Brandon is rich. Connor lowered his head, and his hands clenched into fists. His fingernails sank into his palms until his hands were bleeding. Connor and Mandy met in college. They had become a couple during the first faculty fellowship. She was innocent back then, but now, she had betrayed him and chose Brandon. Connor did not beg Mandy to stay or chase after her because he was broke. Who was he to compete with Brandon? He had seen through Mandy by now. Because he was broke, Mandy had repeatedly insulted him for the past two years. Nevertheless, Connor had never said a thing. All he could do was work harder and make money to support her. However, she cheated on him by hooking up with the rich kid. You have humiliated me today. One day, I will make you realize that it is you who don't deserve me, Connor said to himself with a gleam in his eyes. The Cafeteria, Port Hampton University Look on the bright side, Connor, Dominic Turner, Connor's roommate said, I told you a long time ago that Mandy doesn't belong to our world. She is beautiful, hot, and flirty. I knew at first glance that she wasn't serious about relationships. 
As the saying goes, the goddess of the poor, the sperm vessel of the rich, a long dot legged beautiful girl with ample bosom like her is a plaything of the rich. Plebs like us should stay clear of girls like her. Otherwise, they will make us cuckolds, eventually. I suppose you have slept with her, right? You got nothing to lose. The thing is, I didn't, Connor said. What? You didn't. You two have been together for years, yet you didn't touch her. Didn't you two go to a hotel after a movie? Dominic jumped to his feet, looking distraught. We checked into a standard double dot bedroom, but nothing happened between us, Connor said. You can't be serious. What a loser you are. Connor thought for a moment and agreed with what he said. He genuinely loved Mandy and respected her, so he never forced her to do things that were against her will. Just that, alas. Connor looked at the orders on his phone. The only benefit of the breakup was that he could finally stop delivering food. Just then, his phone beeped with an incoming text message. Your account number ending 4466 is credited with $1 billion. Your account balance now is $1 billion and $56. Connor looked at the message and was wide-eyed. Holy moly. Who deposited a billion dollars into my account? Chapter 2 Stinky Hooligan You are listening at NovelFull.audio Something just came up. I have to go, Dominic. As soon as Connor saw the fund transfer notification on his phone, he ran out of the cafeteria without finishing his meal. Just then, his phone rang. He hurriedly took it out and answered, Hello, dot, may I speak to Connor McDonald? A voice that might belong to a middle dot aged man came through. It was deep, sonorous, and unhurried. This is Connor speaking. And you are. He was startled for a second. You are inheriting an estate. I was wondering when can we meet up, the voice said respectfully. An estate. So so it was you who transferred the money to me. Yes. But the one billion dollars is only a small part of the estate. Most of the remaining fixed assets and overseas funds need to go through the formal process before they can be transferred to you. Holy moly. A billion dollars is only a small part of it. Connor exclaimed in his mind. But, I'm an orphan. Where did I get my inheritance from? We will talk about it when you come over. Find me on the 30.8th floor of the Empire World Building. I will explain everything, the voice said. Connor hesitated for a moment. Okay, I will see you in the afternoon. Okay, Mr. McDonald. The person hung up the phone politely. After leaving the campus, Connor returned to the rented place outside the campus. Because he was working as a delivery guy at night, the dormitory's gate had closed by the time he went off work at 1 o'clock a.m. Hence, he had no choice but to share a rented house with others. Connor's room was less than 10 square meters, but he felt that it was spacious enough. It was only 12 o'clock p.m., but Connor thought of going back to his rented place to take a nap and would only go to meet that person at the Empire World Building in the afternoon. His stomach growled as nature suddenly called. He hurriedly grabbed a roll of toilet paper and ran into the toilet. While he was doing his business, he played Candy Crush on his mobile phone. Just then, someone suddenly opened the bathroom door. A beautiful girl in a laced sleeping gown walked in, rubbing her eyes groggily and running her fingers through her hair in front of the mirror. She looked as if she was still half asleep. Connor was sitting on the toilet bowl right behind her. Unaware that Connor was behind her, the girl put her hands to her waist and started to take off her clothes. She lifted her sexy laced sleeping gown, pulling it up little by little, revealing her sexy waistline and the seductive black strap. She had a hot body, a pretty face, long legs, dark wavy hair, and a very youthful vibe. Connor's eyes almost popped out of their sockets, and he forgot to make a sound. Halfway through with the undressing, the girl opened her eyes, looked in the mirror, and saw the wide that eyed Connor behind her. Coming to her senses, she grabbed the cosmetics on the side and hurled them at Connor. Connor. 
you stinky hooligan. The girl screamed as she pushed the door open and scrambled out. Connor hurriedly pulled up his pants and ran out. Because he was in such a hurry, he accidentally bumped into the couch and groaned in pain. After catching his breath, Connor yelled at the room next door, Are you crazy, Mina? The beautiful girl was Mina, who shared an apartment with Connor. I dare you to say that again. Mina's angry voice came before her hot body appeared in the doorway. Her face darkened as she glared at Connor with knife-like eyes as if she was going to kill him. Why did you break into the bathroom and hurled cosmetics at me? Connor patted the cosmetic powder off his face, looking pissed. Was she entitled to bully him just because she was a girl? Mina stared at him angrily as she came up, wanting to give him a fair one. You freaking pervert and stinky hooligan. It was you who hid in the toilet to peep at me. Yet, you still have the nerve to accuse me with your chop logic. Connor flipped out upon hearing that. I peeped at you. Get your facts right, the bathroom is only this big. Where would I hide? Mina walked over angrily and was stunned when she heard that. She lost her mind when she was angry just now. But looking back, Connor really had no place to hide considering how small the bathroom was. Mina blushed and continued, then, why were you hiding in the bathroom? I was hiding in the bathroom. Come on. It was you who broke into it, okay? Do you think that everyone is like you, hiding in the house every day without having to work or go to class? I'm not going to argue with you. I have something going on, Connor said sarcastically to Mina. Chapter 3 I'm not here to deliver food you are listening at novelfull.audio. Connor was furious. Mina was the one who suddenly came in when he was doing business in the toilet. Connor was an orphan who went to Port Hampton to attend college. He rented a room outside while working as a food delivery guy during his free time to make ends meet to support himself and his girlfriend. Dot Mina was already staying there when Connor moved in. Despite living under the same roof for half a year, there was little interaction between them. Connor usually delivered takeouts besides attending classes, while Mina shut herself in the house. No one knew what she was doing. When Connor was not working, he would wonder if his sexy housemate was someone's kept woman, as every time he saw her, she looked tired. A misunderstanding like today was the first time it had happened. Having stayed here for so long, Connor also knew that Mina always slept late. Therefore, he did not lock the door when he went to the toilet. Little did he expect that Mina would get up so early today and come in without warning. Taunted by Connor, Mina blinked for quite a while before she came to her senses. Why didn't you lock the door? Do you think that the toilet is your private property? Mina did not care about that. Connor almost saw her naked and she would not let Connor off just like that. Are you blind? The toilet lights were on. Didn't you see that? He would not be a gentleman to Mina since she could not be reasoned with. If it was not for Mina being a girl, he would have beaten her on the spot. Mina pointed at Connor furiously. Are you even a man? How could you blame me when you didn't lock the door? I will never be done with you if you don't apologize to me today. Oh yeah. Do you really think of yourself as some sort of celebrity? I won't even spare a glance at your flat chest even if you beg me, Connor sneered, sweeping his eyes over Mina's breasts with disdain. You, Mina's face flushed. Honestly, Mina's breasts were not huge, but she was not breastless. I'm not going to argue with you. I have things to do. Connor looked at the time. It was already 1.30 p.m., he had no time for Mina. Immediately, he grabbed the key on the tab IE and then hurried out the door. Come back here, Connor, you freaking pervert. Mina grabbed the cushion on the couch and hurled it at Connor. But Connor had disappeared out of the door in the blink of an eye. The security door was slammed shut with a loud bang before the cushion hit it. Holy moly. That girl is nasty. Connor sighed and went downstairs indignantly. After leaving his rental place, 
he rode his electric bike and headed toward the Empire World Building. Connor arrived downstairs at the Empire World Building at 2 o'clock p.m. The Empire World Building was 60.8 floors tall. It was a high-end commercial office building in Port Hampton, so the rents on each floor were exorbitantly high. The open.air parking lot of the Empire World Building was full of all kinds of luxurious cars. The personnel entering and exiting the Empire World Building were all dressed in suits and leather shoes. They all appeared to be successful people. Connor, on the other hand, was dressed in a dirty food delivery uniform and stood at the door like a beggar. Excuse me, sir. For food delivery purposes, please go to the fire escape passage on the side, the beautiful receptionist frowned and shouted at him when he walked into the building. Her expression reeked of disdain. I'm not here to deliver food, Connor replied flatly. You aren't. Then, what are you here for? The receptionist still sounded not too happy. I'm looking for someone. Looking for someone. You're just a food delivery guy. Who are you looking for? The receptionist glanced disdainfully at Connor. Connor did not know the name of the person who called him earlier. He just wanted to find out as soon as possible whether the inheritance was real. So, he ignored the receptionist and walked toward the elevator. Hey, stop. What is wrong with you? I just told you to use the fire escape. The receptionist ran after Connor, trying to stop him. Ding. Just then, the elevator doors suddenly opened. Seeing that the receptionist was running after him, Connor quickly slipped into the elevator. Ouch. There was a sudden burst of scream in the elevator. Connor entered the elevator in a hurry. Not noticing that there was someone was inside, he collided with the person in the elevator. Are you blind? Didn't you see that I am inside here, the person in the elevator roared. Connor could not help but glance up at the woman in the elevator and froze in place. The woman was beautiful, in her early twenties, and was wearing a black professional suit that set off her nearly perfect hot body. Her long shapely legs were wrapped in a pair of black stockings. Overall, she looked pleasing to the eyes. Although there was a hint of anger on her pretty face, she was still sexy and charming. When Connor crashed into the woman, she was holding a cup of coffee in her hand, and the coffee was splattered on her chest. You freaking delivery guy. You are not supposed to be in this place. Security, get him out, the woman scolded in disgust when she saw Connor wearing a yellow food delivery uniform. I'm sorry. I was in a hurry, and I didn't notice you here. As Connor spoke, he took a tissue from his pocket and tried to wipe the coffee off the beautiful woman's clothes. When he reached his hand to the lapel of her suit, the woman screamed instinctively. Ah! Help! Help! Chapter 4 Inheriting $10 trillion You are listening at NovelFull.audio More than a dozen security guards rushed over in an instant. I'm sorry, I that I didn't mean it. Seeing the security guards running toward him, Connor pushed the black dot stocking beauty away and bolted into the elevator. Then, he hit the 38th floor button. When the security guards arrived in front of the elevator, they found that Connor had already taken the elevator up. Are you okay, Ms. Moore? What just happened? The head of the security team looked at the black dot stocking lady in puzzlement. A food delivery guy came out of nowhere and touched me. Catch that pervert and hand him to the police. The black dot stocking lady blinked while her sexy eyes were welling up. But. The head of security was in a pickle. But what? The black dot stocking lady frowned. The kid has gone up to the 30.8th floor. Mr. Woods has instructed that no one can go to the 30.8th floor without his permission, the head of security said helplessly as he looked at the beautiful lady. She was startled upon hearing that. Then wait for him here and block all the exits. He will eventually come down, anyway, said the lady with hatred in her tone while gritting her teeth. After entering the elevator, Connor looked at his right hand and felt helpless. The lady had well-endowed breasts, 
they felt good to the touch. But he also knew that he was in big trouble this time. However, Connor was not in the mood to worry about that. His priority was to figure out what the money he received was all about. A minute later, the elevator reached the 38th floor. Connor stepped out of the elevator and found that the entire 38th floor was a single dot unit office. The decoration of the interior was lavish. Looking out from the windows, one could almost overlook the entire Porthampton city skyline in a single glance. Sitting on the chair behind the desk was a middle. Aged man in a suit and tie. When the man saw Connor, he hurriedly got up, walked over to him, and said respectfully, I've been expecting you, Mr. MacDonald. So, you're the person who called me? Connor asked with a frown. Yes. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Thomas Morgan, General Manager of Empire World Corporation, the man said with a smile. Connor nodded, looking around the office, and asked, You called me and said that I have inherited an estate. What is going on? Mr. MacDonald, do you remember your granduncle? Thomas asked in a low voice. My granduncle. Connor was stunned. Suddenly, he remembered that he had indeed seen his granduncle when he was a child. The thing was that his family said that his granduncle had died when he was still in elementary school. Your granduncle was the chairman of Empire World Corporation. At the beginning of founding the company, Mr. Barry emigrated abroad and lived alone. Because he has no children and other next out of dot kin, all his property will be passed on to you, Thomas said slowly. I will inherit it all alone. Connor was stunned, not expecting that the stories that only existed in TV series had happened to him. Yes, let me give you a brief explanation of Mr. Barry's estate. He has a billion dollars cash in the country, which I have transferred to you in advance. But that is only a small part of it. Since Mr. Barry had been living abroad for a long time, besides Empire World Corporation in Oprana, his estate includes Terence Group in Europe, Radiant Group, and several African oil companies. Thomas took out a document from the drawer and explained to Connor the estate that he was to inherit. In the beginning, Connor was still listening attentively to Thomas's explanation. L.O. But toward the end, Connor felt that it was too surreal and could not help but interrupt Thomas. Hold on a second, Mr. Morgan. Are you sure that all these are mine alone? Absolutely. Thomas nodded, looking at Connor sincerely. How much are these assets worth? Connor continued to ask. Well. Thomas was startled for a second, and then, he said softly, conservative estimation shows that it's 10 trillion US dollars. 10.10 trillion. And, it's in US dollars. Connor was wide-eyed and voice trembling upon hearing what Thomas said. Absolutely. Thomas looked at Connor and nodded. That's impossible. Connor shook his head. You must be lying. My grandfather has a cousin, but I never knew that he is so wealthy. Ten trillion dollars should have put him on the list of world's richest men. I suppose you're talking about the Forbes list of the world's billionaires, right? Thomas looked at Connor and smiled. That's right. That's the list. If he was really that rich, he would have been on the list a long time ago, right? Let me tell you this, the people you see on the list are not really rich enough. They are on the list just to increase their fame in order to get better social resources. Mr. Barry had long passed that stage and had been living abroad for a long time. He just didn't want to reveal his identity. Connor looked at Thomas and felt that he was not lying. Even if Thomas was a liar, there was no reason for him to deceive a penniless guy like him. Okay, then. Is there any condition for me to inherit the estate? Connor calmed down his excitement and asked. Chapter 5 Kneel and kowtow to me you are listening at novel full dot audio. Thomas pulled the drawer open, retrieved a document from it, and handed it to Connor. This is the will that Mr. Barry made when he was hospitalized. You just need to sign it, and the inheritance will be yours. But, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. 
What's that? Connor asked in puzzlement as he took the will from Thomas. Before Mr. Barry passed away, he specifically instructed that before you could inherit his estate, you must marry Freya Phillips. Otherwise, the estate would be donated to charitable foundations in its entirety, Thomas said slowly. Mary Freya Phillips. Who is Freya Phillips? Connor was stunned, not expecting that he had to fulfill such a special condition before he could inherit the estate. So, the inheritance came with a wife attached. According to the will, I can't reveal any information about her, Thomas said. Is Freya overweight and ugly? Connor asked with a frown. Envy, you don't have to worry about her. Even if she isn't good. Looking, you can turn her into a beauty as long as you have money in this modern age, Thomas said with a smile. What you said makes sense. Connor rubbed his nose and nodded. Okay, I agree. If you have no further questions, sign the will now, and it will take effect immediately. Thomas pushed the will in front of Connor. Connor had no reason to refuse such a massive inheritance. He would marry a pig, not to mention an ugly woman, for the inheritance. It was because Connor had suffered enough from being poor. After Connor put his signature, Thomas put away the will, took out a black card, and handed it to Connor respectfully. What is this? Connor took it in puzzlement. It is the American Express Centurion card, the most prestigious debit card that American Express had launched in the United Kingdom in 1999. With this card, you can enjoy the world's top member. Only benefits and services, and you can spend at will with no spending limit. Connor studied the Centurion card and smiled at Thomas. Are you sure I can use this card at will and there's no spending limit? Absolutely. The spending of this card is borne by your company, and the total market value of your company is over $10 trillion. So, if the spending is within $10 trillion, then it will be fine, Thomas explained softly. I didn't know that there was such a powerful debit card. Connor grinned as he was ready to leave in a moment so he could give the card a try. By the way, Mr. McDonald, this is my business card. I am running the company for you. If you encounter any trouble, feel free to call me. Thomas handed Connor the business card respectfully. I will. Connor took the business card. If there is nothing else, I'll go now. Let me see you out, Thomas said politely. It is all right. I can go by myself. Connor casually held up a hand and left Thomas's office. Five minutes later, Connor stepped out of the elevator. More than a dozen security guards swarmed over and surrounded Connor, who looked dumbfounded, not knowing what to do. I have been expecting you, you little pervert. The black dot stocking lady, whom Connor had touched earlier, came out of the crowd with her arms akimbo. She looked at Connor with a sneer in her eyes. How dare you molest Ms. Moore, you freaking delivery guy. You must have a death wish. You should have looked at yourself in the mirror, you shameless pervert. The beautiful receptionist also joined the others to bash Connor. It's true that it was my fault earlier, but I already apologized to you. What else do you want? Connor said to the black dot stocking lady in front of him with a frown. What do I want? Do you know how disgusted I felt when you touched me just now? I feel like killing myself whenever I recall what you did to me. The black dot stocking lady despised Connor. Her voice was filled with contempt. No one is stopping you from killing yourself. Get out of my way, I need to go now. Her remarks had pissed Connor off. It was clearly a personal attack. So, Connor also sounded exasperated. You want to go, the black dot stocking lady sneered and pointed at Connor. You're not leaving until you apologize to me. How do you want me to apologize to you? Connor looked at the black dot stocking lady with piercing eyes. His voice was icy. Kneel and kowtow to me, and I will forgive you. If you refuse, then I will hand you to the police, she threatened him. That's right, kowtow to Ms. Moore, the security guards echoed. As Connor was surrounded by the guards, he looked helpless. 
he did not expect that the lady would make such an unreasonable demand. He had just accidentally touched her breasts, and she demanded him to kneel and kowtow to her. What are you waiting for, kid? Get on your knees, the head of security said in a commanding voice. Connor turned to look at the head of security but said nothing. Being poor did not mean that he had no dignity. What are you all doing here, Scarlet? Just then, an angry voice came from behind Connor. It stunned everyone present. Chapter 6 6 That I Will Do Anything You Are Listening at Novel Full.audio Chapter 6 That I Will Do Anything Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Thomas had wanted to see Connor out personally because Connor was now the chairman of Empire World Corporation. Moreover, as his subordinate, Thomas wanted to curry favor with him. Thomas just did not expect that Connor would go in such a hurry. Connor did not give Thomas the chance to butter him up, and he walked into the elevator alone. So, Thomas had to wait for the next elevator to go downstairs. When he finally came downstairs and stepped out of the elevator, he saw a crowd swarming around Connor, blocking him at the elevator entrance. He went weak at the knees at seeing what happened. M. de Marth Morgan. Scarlet saw Thomas and exclaimed in fear. What are you doing here, Scarlet? Thomas stepped forward, questioning her with a grave face. Mr. Morgan, this penniless delivery guy molested Ms. Moore. Miss Moore and the others are now teaching him a lesson. The receptionist shot off her mouth before even figuring out what had actually happened. Dot, penniless delivery guy. Thomas was struck dumb for a second, and then, he angrily pointed his finger at the receptionist. You are fired. Get out of here. The receptionist was appalled, blinking her big round eyes as she looked at Thomas in puzzlement. Mr. Morgan, I, didn't you hear what one say? Get the hell out of here. Thomas was indifferent toward her, but when he turned to look at Connor, he was very respectful. Are you all right, Mr. Chairman? This is all my fault. I should have accompanied you downstairs and seen you out just now. I'm fine. Connor waved his hand. Everyone's mouth was agape as they were all astonished upon hearing what Thomas said. Did the general manager of Empire World Corporation just address the penniless delivery guy as chairman? Chair, chairman. Scarlet was stunned. Her voice was trembling, and her pupils constricted. She looked at Thomas and asked, What is going on, Mr. Morgan? What is going on? Mr. MacDonald is the new chairman of Empire World Corporation. Apologize to him immediately. Thomas's face looked grave. Scarlet had a fearful expression on her face. However, she quickly came to her senses and said to Connor with no hesitation, Mr. MacDonald, I was wrong. It was my fault. I was the one who offended you. Please forgive me. Scarlet bowed to Connor after saying that. While bowing, she deliberately squeezed her breasts, exposing a large portion of her fair skin. Connor saw it and was wide-eyed. He could not help but exclaim in his mind, this woman called Scarlet is so much sexier than those college students. Just this act of hers alone had aroused his desire. How do you want to punish her, Mr. MacDonald? Thomas looked at Connor respectfully. Scarlet heard that and panicked. She hurried up to Connor and said softly, I beg you, Mr. MacDonald, please don't fire me. I will do anything you ask me to. Not everyone had the opportunity to work in the Empire World Corporation, which was the top dog of the top 100 companies in Oprana. It took Scarlett a lot of hard work to become a department manager earning a seven-dot-figure annual salary. She did not want to lose her job because of this. You will do anything. Connor chuckled playfully. Seeing Connor's attitude, Scarlett beamed. Yes. As long as you don't fire me, one will do anything for you. She licked her lips as she spoke, and her eyes were teasing with seduction. Being able to become a department manager in her early twenties, Scarlett knew where her strengths lie. Besides, as the chairman of Empire World Corporation, 
Connor was a somebody. So, Scarlet thought that if she could make something happen between her and Connor, her position in the company would be solidified. Well, since you can do anything, then tomorrow you will work as a janitor in the company. With that, Connor walked out of the company building without looking back. Scarlet was rooted to the spot, feeling humiliated. She never expected that Connor was not tempted by her beauty, but instead, he asked her to become a janitor. Didn't you hear what Mr. MacDonald said? Thomas asked with an indifferent face. Yes, Mr. Morgan. Scarlet nodded hurriedly. It was better to work as a janitor than to be fired. Chapter 7 7. Withdrawing Five Million Dollars You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Withdrawing Five Million Dollars Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation After leaving the Empire World Building, Connor was eager to test out the Centurion card. To do that, he headed toward a nearby bank on his electric bike. Five minutes later, he entered the banking hall of the bank. Since it was a weekday, there was no crowd in the bank. He went straight to the teller counter. The teller lady, a woman in heavy makeup and a professional suit, saw Connor come in and said lazily, How may I help you? She sounded cold. Having been in the job for so long, she could tell the background of the person at a glance. Connor was wearing a food delivery uniform, looking like a pauper through and through. The teller lady acted unenthusiastically, thinking he was just another insignificant customer. Nevertheless, Connor did not mind her bad service attitude. I would like to perform a withdrawal, he said flatly. Withdrawal. Don't you see the ATMs over there? The teller lady sounded not too pleased. Just Google it a little if you don't know how to use them. I'm busy. Busy. She was so free that she could take a nap there if she wanted to. Her attitude pissed Connor off, so he called out, one demand to see your manager. Connor raised his voice. Is this how your bank does things? Don't you know that customer is king? I can't believe it. Hearing the noise in the banking hall, the branch manager hurried out. What's going on? Seeing the branch manager and thinking she had reinforcement, the teller lady pointed at Connor. Mr. Manning, this guy is here to cause trouble. Mr. Manning was alarmed, looking at Connor with a scowl on his face. What are you doing here? Connor smiled wryly. I would like to perform a withdrawal. Mr. Manning frowned. There are ATMs for withdrawing cash. Why come to the counter? The manager and the teller lady were just the same, they sounded unappeased. Then suddenly the penny dropped, Connor realized that Mr. Manning and the teller lady were having an affair. He did not want to argue with them, so he just told them, what if I would like to withdraw five million dollars? Dollar five million. The teller lady scanned Connor and taunted, a food delivery guy like you wants to withdraw five million dollars. Huh. You must be kidding me. Did you mean five hundred dollars? Five million dollars? In your dream? Mr. Manning also did not believe that the guy who looked like a loser could withdraw five million dollars. However, a branch manager like Mr. Manning was a sly old fox. He cocked an eyebrow and asked, Do you really want to withdraw five million dollars? The teenager wearing a food delivery uniform might look like a loser but sometimes, it was hard to predict the quirks of the rich. That was why he asked. Connor sneered. Why else would I come here if not for withdrawing money? Or, do you expect me to play games here? I have to inform my superior for such a large sum of money, Mr. Manning said indifferently, why don't you go to the lounge and wait for a while? Connor nodded, no problem. The teller lady sneered. Mr. Manning, don't tell me that you really think he has $5 million to withdraw, do you? Shut up and knock it off. Mr. Manning was not too happy. One look could tell from his experience that Connor was not joking. Connor was really going to withdraw $5 million. Ordinary folks would not come and ask to withdraw $5 million at one go. 
He was eager to cozy up to a super-dot-rich kid like Connor. The teller lady shut up immediately when Mr. Manning chided her. But she still had a disdainful look on her face. She did not believe that Connor had so much money to withdraw. A food delivery guy pretending to be a rich kid. Heck. But, half an hour later, when she saw Connor carrying a sack of cash out of the VIP lounge with Mr. Manning following behind him servilely, she was stunned. Her eyes were wide open. Did this loser really withdraw five million dollars? Does he really have five million dollars, Mr. Manning? The teller lady had not given up and asked the branch manager. Do you want him to show it to you? Mr. Manning snorted, looking not too happy. Fortunately, he was more observant and did not offend Connor like the fool. Otherwise, he could have lost his job as the branch manager. The woman wanted to open the package to see if there were $5 million inside. However, she choked back just as she was about to open her mouth. I apologize to you if my staff has said something that offends you, Mr. McDonald, Mr. Manning said respectfully. He then took out a business card. This is my business card. You may come to me directly if you need help in the future. Anyone with a working brain knew that a person who could withdraw $5 million in cash was a VIP customer. He did not become a branch manager for nothing. He had to fawn up to Connor as he did not want to lose this VIP customer to other banks. Connor nodded faintly, took the business card, and put it in his pocket. He then said in a disapproving tone, Mr. Manning, the service quality of your staff is much left to be desired. If this continues, it will not be long before you lose customers to other banks. I hope you can discipline your staff. Connor then tucked the sack of cash into the food delivery bag and left. Chapter 8 8. Best Friends Ridicule You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Best Friends Ridicule Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Connor was riding an electric bike and was about to rush home. It was at that moment his phone suddenly started ringing. Connor, where are you? Don't you know that we have classes in the afternoon? His roommate, Dominic, yelled in urgency from the other end of the line. Dominic was Connor's roommate and one of his few friends in college. Oh crap, I almost forgot. Connor exclaimed. He then quickly said, one foot eleven inches head over to class right now, hurry up. Dominic replied in a low voice and immediately hung up. Connor hurriedly rode his electric bike toward Port Hampton University's campus area. His first class in the afternoon was finance. It was taught by a lecturer called Ray Walkster. What Ray hated the most was students being tardy. Anyone who had the audacity to be late for his classes more than twice would have to repeat the subject the next semester. Hence, Connor did not dare to dawdle. As soon as he arrived at Port Hampton University, he quickly grabbed his food delivery bag and rushed to the classroom. Five minutes later, he finally arrived at the classroom. But he was still late. When Connor got to the classroom entrance, he felt the whole class staring at him. For a whole minute, Ray paid no heed to Connor and carried on his lecture in the class. Excuse me. Connor called out as he stood by the door. Ray finally put the pointer down and turned to look at Connor. He said coldly, Connor McDonald, did you lose track of time delivering takeouts? Do you have any idea what time it is now? Are you here to learn or to deliver takeouts? Ray obviously was not really expecting an answer from Connor when he asked these questions. He just wanted to humiliate Connor. All students in the class burst out laughing when they heard Ray's words. Connor, who was currently in his yellow uniform, was holding a food delivery bag, he truly looked like a food delivery person. Come here. Open that food delivery bag you have in your hand and show everyone the delicious takeouts that you've delivered today. Ray continued ridiculing him. Ha ha ha. Once again, the classroom was filled with roaring laughter. The two who laughed the loudest were Mandy and Brandon. They were currently sitting in the last row of the classroom and flirting with each other. 
the sight of them made Connor feel bitter. That was because when Connor was still with Mandy, she had never sat with him before. All of his classmates obviously knew about Mandy dumping him. I don't think that's necessary, Connor said indifferently. Although Ray Walkster was a lecturer at Porthampton University, he was not an educator who cared about the students. On the contrary, he looked down on poor students, so he often picked on Connor in his previous lessons. However, Ray had always tried to please the students from wealthy families. It was as if he was a lap dog. Take your food delivery bag with you and quickly get to your seat. I'm warning you, the next time you're late, you won't be in my class anymore. The poorer they are, the more hopeless they are, said Ray coldly. He lost interest upon seeing Connor's reaction. Connor could only oblige obediently. He walked into the classroom with a food delivery bag in his hand. Many of his classmates were looking at the food delivery bag he had in his hand. They were even whispering to each other and letting out faint sounds of laughter. All of them were probably talking about him delivering food. Connor sat in his seat but did not pay attention to the lesson. He felt bitter as he peered at the last row, where Brandon and Mandy were sitting. Connor, are you all right? Connor's roommate, Spencer, whispered beside him. I'm fine, Connor replied indifferently. Why were you late? By the way, I heard that you and Mandy, Spencer, don't bring up something like that, said Dominic with annoyance while punching Spencer on the shoulder. Dominic and Spencer often helped Connor back when they were still in school, and Connor never forgot how good they were to him. I'm fine, really, Connor forced a smile at the two and placed the food delivery bag under his feet. Dominic and Spencer thought Connor was in a bad mood, so they did not continue bothering him. One class period ended very quickly. After Ray had left, a sweet dot looking girl stood up. Class, tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Let's have dinner together, she shouted while smiling. The girl, who was only in her early twenties, was very pretty and had a shapely figure. Her legs were fair and long. She had donned a blue short dress and a pair of sports shoes which made her look youthful and energetic. She was Eunice Tanner, the course representative of finance. Eunice was kind-hearted and innocent. She had never looked down on Connor for being poor. On the contrary, she had helped Connor many times. Yes. We can finally have a dinner party together. The student representative has spoken, so all of us must go. Everyone in the class immediately became restless. At that moment, Dominic ran to Connor. He placed his hand over Connor's shoulder and said, Con, come join us today. It's been a while since we had a dinner party together as a class, Dominic, why are you inviting that pauper? How could he have the money to attend the dinner party? A girl in a pencil skirt yelled at Dominic loudly. Connor could not help but lift his head to look at the girl. She was Mae Young, Mandy's best friend and roommate. Mae looked down on Connor and often bullied him. A huge part of the reason behind Mandy dumping Connor and choosing to be with Brandon was due to Mae's instigation. Exactly. How can a pauper like Connor afford to go to a dinner party? Mandy's other roommate, Lily Sullivan, added sarcastically. Chapter 9 9. Classmates Contempt You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 9 Classmates Contempt Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation, May, Lily, what are the two of you talking about? Dominic yelled, feeling irritated. Dot, was one wrong? Would this penniless food delivery person have the money to join a dinner party? We had so many dinner parties together as a class, but have you ever seen him join one? May responded while rolling her eyes. I'll pay for Connor if he doesn't have the money. Is it really necessary for all of you to humiliate him like this, said Spencer, who stepped forward. He could not stand them anymore. Ho ho. Spencer, since you're so wealthy, why don't you pay for me as well? Brandon shouted with a poker face after he heard what Spencer said. Spencer turned to glance at Brandon. A hint of uncertainty flashed across his eyes. 
Even though Spencer's family was doing quite well, his family's wealth was nothing compared to Brandon's. Therefore, he could only shut up. I'll pay for Connor. We're all classmates. Was all of this necessary? Eunice yelled with a frown. She could not stand them too. Suddenly, Connor said nonchalantly, Eunice, you don't have to pay for me. I have the money. When Connor's classmates heard him say that, they were stunned. All of them had very strange expressions. None of them expected Connor to agree to come to the dinner party out of the blue. After all, Connor was currently in junior year, so he had been classmates with everyone for three whole years. Usually, Connor did not join them no matter the kind of get dot together that was held. There was only one reason behind it, he had no money. When Brandon heard Connor say that he had the money, Brandon immediately laughed. Yeah, right. The food delivery guy has the money to join a dinner party. Connor, how about this? Why don't you treat the whole class to a meal? Brandon, don't joke around. If the pauper treats us all to a meal, one foot eleven inches immediately go and eat poop. Suddenly, a guy with an unkempt and sleazy face shouted arrogantly. Connor said nonchalantly, all right. Since everyone wants me to treat the class to a meal that badly, then one will treat everyone to a meal. The sleazy dot faced guy's smile instantly froze when he heard Connor's words. Everyone around them was surprised. Nobody expected Connor to agree to Brandon's request. After Brandon heard Connor say that he would treat everyone to a meal, a trace of confusion flashed across his eyes. He could not understand it, why would a pauper like Connor, who delivered food to earn money, suddenly turn over a new leaf and spend a big sum of money on treating everyone to a meal. Even Mandy was currently looking at Connor in shock. However, she quickly regained her composure. Connor was definitely posing. How could he possibly have the money to treat everyone to a meal? When Mandy thought about it, she felt glad that she had broken up with Connor. Otherwise, she would definitely feel so embarrassed right now. In her eyes, Connor was a loser who did not strive to improve himself. Not only was he penniless, but he was also a poser. What's up with Con today? Dominic was also puzzled right now. I have no idea. Maybe he can't get over how his girlfriend left him for someone else, so he bit the bullet and agreed. Spencer whispered. Then, he added, treating the whole class to a meal would just cost $2,000. In the worst dot case scenario, the two of us will foot the bill for him. All right. If we split it by half, it would be one thousand each. Dominic nodded. At that moment, he felt a little sympathetic toward Connor. What's gotten into you, Connor? Not only are you joining our dinner party, but you're also treating us to a meal. Could it be that you're just talking big? May teased Connor with contempt. Yeah. If you're really treating us to a meal, then Melvin would have to eat poop. Lily added. Melvin Jones was the sleazy dot faced guy who said he would eat poop if Connor treated everyone to a meal. Well, isn't it just a meal? Connor responded indifferently. He then turned to Melvin and said, When will you give everyone a show of you eating poop? If you have the guts to treat us, then one have the guts to eat poop. However, you're not planning on taking us to a food court, right? Melvin spoke to Connor disdainfully. Connor worked hard to treat us to a meal. How could we possibly go to a food court? It should at least be Brasserie Le Bernardini, Brandon jeered. Brasserie Le Bernardine. Connor could not help but shake his head when he heard Brandon's words. Yes, exactly. Connor, if you treat us to a meal at Brasserie Le Bernardine, one foot eleven inches eat poop for everyone to see. Melvin quickly added. What's the verdict, Connor? Since you intend to treat everyone to a meal, Brasserie Le Bernardine shouldn't be a problem, right? Asked Brandon with a vile smirk. No problem. Brasserie Le Bernardine it is. Connor replied nonchalantly. Once again, his classmates were stunned by his words. 
All of them knew that Brasserie Le Bernardin was where the state banquets were held. All of the chefs there cooked for the nation's leaders. Treating the whole class to a meal would cost at least forty to fifty thousand dollars. How could Connor possibly afford it? Has Connor gone crazy? Why did he agree to it? Dominic gasped lowly. If they went to a normal food court, both he and Spencer could afford to pay for the meal if they each paid half. However, if it was Brasserie Le Bernardin, the two of them would not even be able to afford it even if they sold themselves for money. Going to Brasserie Le Bernardin isn't a problem. However, one have one condition. At that moment, Connor suddenly spoke. What's the condition? Brandon asked while looking at Connor. For today's dinner party at Brasserie Le Bernardin, you and I divide the check by 50.50. .50. How does that sound? Ho ho, 50.50. .50. Brandon sneered and said with contempt, not a problem. The cost for today's dinner party, we'll split it 50.50. .50. Brandon, you're a champ. Whoa, I'm actually going to dine at Brasserie Le Bernardin. Their classmates burst into cheers when they heard what Brandon said. A meal at Brasserie Le Bernardin with this many people would cost at least forty to fifty thousand dollars. Even though it was only half of the check, it still amounted to more than twenty thousand. Even though this pained Brandon a little, it did not mean that he could not afford the amount. On the contrary, he felt like Connor could not shell out the amount of money. Connor, just you wait. I'll see what you'll do when we pay for the check later. Brandon looked at Connor's back and smirked. Chapter 10 10. Get the Supreme Private Dining Room You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Get the Supreme Private Dining Room Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation A while later, they arrived at the most famous restaurant in Port Hampton, Brasserie Le Bernardin. The moment Connor's classmates entered Brasserie Le Bernardin, their eyes were wide in astonishment. Even though many in Port Hampton University were born into second-generation wealth, it did not mean that all students were very wealthy. There were students from average income families who had never been to a place like that. Meanwhile, Dominic and Spencer were trailing behind Connor with anxious expressions. Con, do you really have enough money to treat everyone to a meal? Spencer hesitated for two seconds before whispering to Connor. Don't worry. Since I dared to come, I must have the money to foot the bill, Connor responded calmly. But, just as Spencer was about to speak, a beautiful lady in a white bodycon dress walked over to Connor and everyone else with a smile. When the beautiful lady saw Connor, a hint of contempt flashed across her eyes. She then turned to Brandon and bowed while saying, Mr. Guthrie, are you here for a meal? That's right. We're here for a meal. Get me a big private dining room. Connor said in a conceited tone. Of course, Mr. Guthrie. We currently have the standard private dining room for $20.8,000, the VIP private dining room for $50.8,000, and the supreme private dining room for $80.8,000. Which would you prefer? The beautiful lady asked softly with a smile on her face. When Brandon heard what the beautiful lady said, he could not help but turn to Connor and say to him softly, Connor, it wasn't easy to get everyone to come to Brasserie Le Bernardin for once. I think the standard private dining room seems ingenuine. We might as well get the VIP private dining room. Brandon, aren't you being too unreasonable? The minimum cost for the VIP private dining room is $50.8,000. Dominic shouted as if he was a little dissatisfied. Everyone present knew that Brandon was deliberately making things difficult for Connor. If Connor actually bit the bullet and agreed, then he would have to spend a lot of money. If he did not agree, he would then be embarrassing himself in front of everyone. Brandon ignored Dominic and said to Connor, So. Just say the word. Yes or no? Could it possibly be that you're frightened by the price of the VIP private dining room? There's no need to get a VIP private dining room, Connor said nonchalantly. Ha ha ha, I knew you were a pauper. 
You don't have the money, yet you're still posing. Let's switch to the standard private dining room then. The reason Brandon had actually said those words just now was merely to ridicule Connor. After all, if they had really gotten the VIP private dining room, even he might not be able to afford it. Get us a standard private dining room then, gorgeous. Brandon turned to the beautiful lady in a dress and said. Of course, I'll have it arranged for you. The beautiful lady smiled while nodding her head. Hold on. When did I ever say that we're eating in the standard private dining room? It was at that moment, Connor spoke abruptly. What's the matter? You changed your mind because you think that it's too expensive. Brandon turned to Connor and asked. Since you mentioned that it wasn't easy for everyone to come to Brasserie Le Bernardine for once, then why just a standard private dining room? Let's go straight for the supreme private dining room. Connor said calmly. When Brandon heard what Connor said, he instantly froze. The smile on his face also dropped. On the other hand, their classmates were also dumbfounded. Connor, have you gone mad? Do you know that the minimum cost for the Supreme Private Dining Room is $80.8,000? At that moment, Spencer spoke. That's right. Connor, you can't possibly not know about Brasserie Le Bernardin's minimum spending rule, right? Brandon also had a ghastly expression. Brandon would not have expected Connor to actually request for the Supreme Private Dining Room. The expression of the beautiful lady in white gradually changed. She had thought that Brandon was the wealthiest kid in the group. Never had she expected Connor, who was dressed in a food delivery person's uniform, to be the richest among them. Mandy sized Connor up, and she also had a shocked expression on her face. She could not understand why Connor, who had been stingy, became generous. He was now like an entirely different person. Con, can you really shell out this much? Dominic stared at Connor and asked. Of course I can. However, I'm worried that Brandon won't be able to. Connor responded nonchalantly. After Brandon heard what Connor said, he was taken aback for a moment. Then, he proceeded to yell, fine. Isn't it just a supreme private dining room? Why wouldn't I be able to shell out the amount? Since Connor wants it, then let's get it. Brandon fell right into Connor's trap. Brandon did not have the cheek to say that he did not have the money. So, he could only bite the bullet and agree. Once the beautiful lady had the private dining room set up, she led them into the room. Everyone had puzzled expressions on their faces after entering the private dining room. Dot after all, they could not figure out why Connor, someone who made a living by delivering food, suddenly became so generous. Connor, do you really plan on treating us to a meal here? May's tone toward Connor had changed a little. Her eyes were sizing him up. Of course. Everyone, eat all you want. Connor said nonchalantly. When everyone heard what Connor said, they immediately picked up the menu and started ordering. While they were ordering, Brandon looked like a sore loser and ordered a bottle of red Bordeaux in front of Connor. However, he did not expect Connor to follow along and order another ten bottles of wine instead of feeling distressed. The order cost them nearly $50,000. Brandon's expression instantly darkened. He knew that he did not have that much money to pay the check. Brandon, aren't you looking a little ghastly there? Are you feeling distressed? Connor turned to Brandon and asked softly. Ho ho, those were just a few bottles of red wine. I have nothing to be distressed over. It's just a small matter. Brandon bit the bullet and replied, his head bowed as he checked his phone. He looked like he was going to look for people to borrow money from. 